As autumn gives way to winter, brothers Chris and Casey Kiefer are drawn to the wild places on a live to hunt, hunt to live mission, dropped with very little to rely on but each other. Each new season brings with it a new arena and new challenges. Together, the Kiefer brothers have faced angry predators, extreme hunger, impassable terrain, and volatile shifting weather patterns. They've explored hundreds of miles of desolate mountain ranges, unsettled tundras, raging rivers, and unpredictable perils of territories where few are willing to go. All for the love of the hunt, to test themselves, to test each other, not to prove anything to anyone, but to feed the fire inside. This is Dropped. Amazing grace, what sweet sight See her dressed in white I once was lost, but now I'm found Through her amazing grace and a soft cotton Northern Saskatchewan, the land of living skies. Landlocked and sparsely populated, this diverse province has a reputation of being equal parts beautiful and brutal. The grasslands of southern and central Saskatchewan surrender to the thick boreal forests of the north, where black bears, wolves, and moose patrol towering thickets of spruce and pine. This is where the Kiefer brothers will carve out a living for the next 30 days. With a change in arena comes a change in the rules. The brothers have access to thousands of acres of Canadian wilderness by way of a remote lake. They've been afforded a motorized fishing boat, just big enough to transport their gear and a limited supply of fuel reserves. For the duration of their journey, this boat will be their lifeline, allowing them to search for the lake trout, northern pike and walleye that soar through the depths beneath them, while providing the opportunity to scout and hunt the vast expanses of the game-rich northern timber. The Kiefer brothers hold tags for a moose and a black bear, but a tag is far from a guarantee. night yeah I'm ready exploration day here today exciting stuff here take this ready to rock and roll day number one still got the uh, fresh off and drop like excitement let's get this thing going let's get it on the move so where do you think we go I think we got some of these back bays down here that we could see from the air that look pretty sweet so uh, oh you good <laughs> oh hey we're we're jockeying here for position. Uh, ready to rock. Definitely going moose hunting today. Casey's got the moose tag. I got a black bear tag. So I think we're starting with moose. As much as the fishing is tempting right now, uh, it's time to like get after it. But great night last night, huh? First time? Yeah, how nice was that freaking tent? The tent was unbelievable. Warm, dry, like that's a change. That's a change of pace for us on drop thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, I think that's the good part. Each year, Casey and I challenge ourselves to do something different. This year, it's 30 days, Saskatchewan bush, limited supplies, and living off the land. It doesn't get much better than that. Let's go do it, huh? Let's roll. The Kiefer Brothers' first full day in the Saskatchewan wilderness is a day of exploration. While crafting a game plan and learning the lay of the land, they've identified an area on the map that appears to be ideal moose habitat. With no time wasted, the brothers embark on their first moose mission of the journey. As far as goes, we're gonna get up here, I think. As far as elevation, there's gonna be nothing. No. Higher than this. The only other option would be to actually get down into it. Yeah. On the edge of it somewhere. The wind is perfect in our face right now. It's just pulling back up these rocks. 
I like kind of having to look at it. If we sat right here and call, you're going to hear them coming. Yeah, you should. Plus, I really don't want to go just barreling in there. No. No, it's uh, definitely a mosey area right here. A lot of muskeg. And it's a pinch point. Let's just hang back, sit here, and call for a bit. Okay. We got time. The brothers decide to take full advantage of a rare rise in elevation in a landscape where high spots are few and far between. Their calls will carry through the timber while their eyes stay peeled for a moose moving through the muskeg. Before barreling through the thickets, they'll attempt to bring a bull moose out of the bush. Just hours into their first hunt, the Kiefer brothers have completed a series of bellowing cow calls from a promising vantage point. When the calls go unanswered, Chris and Casey begin to reconsider their game plan. What do you want to do here? I mean, probably the best bet would be to start checking these bays. Just start putting into them, call from the water maybe. Call from the water, see if we can pull something out. And if we think like it looks like it's good, we'll get out and explore. But I mean, until we can actually find our spot where we know, you know, then let's just keep on exploring. Visibility, like yeah. getting up in here, it's tough. It's going to be limited no matter where we go. Yeah, this is thick ass bush right here. It's almost like we got to draw them out, you know what I mean? Try to get them to come to us. Yeah. Just start putting in bays and calling. Yeah, I'm good with that. We fish our way along and call. Cover some ground. Yeah. All right, let's do that till we find a good spot. Yeah, it's fine. Leading up to the drop, the brothers poured over maps of the area, arming themselves with vital information on the landscape and the moose that call it home. The thick cover of the North Woods creates rich big game habitat, but it also gives resident moose the home field advantage, making it tough on any hunter who enters their territory. They decide to switch gears initiating plan B in their pursuit of Saskatchewan's purest red meat. The game plan is to set course for a new bay that the brothers suspect is surrounded by prime moose country. The new location will allow Chris and Casey to call from the shoreline with hopes to lure a bull into shot range. By sticking close to camp, the brothers hope to preserve precious fuel and fading daylight. All right. We've changed places. We're just trying to hit these bays right now. Trying to call them to water, trying to hunt smarter, not harder. Because we don't know the land right now. Get a call? Yeah, call it. Let a few calls out, let them feller, see if we can draw something out. At least get their attention in these bays. Day number one. Let's try it and see what happens. It can't hurt. And I, uh, I really like them coming to us and not having to go to them. I don't feel like packing a giant moose out more than we have to. But I'll take it either way. Different tactics on day one. Hopefully it works. The brothers are utilizing an age-old method of calling to lure and entice a dominant wandering bull moose. The call, traditionally made from birch bark, is cone-shaped and designed to project the hunter's cries outward for long distances. This proven method is capable of accurately imitating the natural breeding behaviors of both cow and bull moose. The cow call is a long, drawn-out moan, mimicking a lovesick cow. It's irresistible to a rutting bull moose on a mission. The bull call is a short, throaty grunt a territorial challenge that inspires resident bulls to investigate in search of a cow in heat or a fight for territory and breeding rights. 
the brothers employ a calculated series of both calls in their quest for Saskatchewan's finest bulls. It's sweet back here. Yeah, I love how we can see everything in front of us, but our back is really to the water, so there's nothing going to be charging through the brush right here. Yeah. We can pull them down off this hill or down out of these valleys, actually to the bay. That could be, uh, that could be good for us right there. I think for now, just kind of sitting back here and being as minimally intrusive as we can, that's probably the way to go. Yeah. Just call from out here and see what happens. But my first priority in my mind is to eat right now. <laughs> Hungry. I keep thinking about said fish that you caught yesterday. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's going to be dark soon, so there's a lot of work to be done. And I say that we uh, fish our way back to camp. Yeah. Let's do it. Jump in the boat. Yeah. It's dark. <laughs> the Kiefer brothers have reached the final hours of their first full day of exploration. They're fishing their way back to base camp in hopes of earning a meal. Okay, that didn't take long. No, nope, it did not. We just got here on our way back to camp. On our way back to base camp here, Casey said, hey, this is where I caught that one yesterday. And please tell me he's an eater. Nope, not too small. No, <laughs> nothing too small. He's just not too big. Too small. Let's get here. Let's see if we can get him a good measurement. Let's check this out. Hey, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? He's too small. What do you mean? He's too small. There's trout in here. Keep fishing. It's rough. Too small. Too small. They're either too big. They're too small. I gotta let the first one go. I'm starving right now. Not a fan right now. That's right. I'm gonna catch my next one, <laughs> and I'm gonna throw them in the front of the boat where you can't touch them. Next one, you gotta start with the first one. Pike. Pike. Yeah. Yes. Oh, here. Yep. Oh, don't. Holy mother of God. The pinch. Well, I'm thinking that's all she wrote. We just got worked by some fish. We failed miserably. But I think tonight we just go to bed on an empty stomach, try to stay warm. It's getting chilly, huh? Yeah, it's getting cold right now. Day two, and it's already getting cold. I can't imagine what it's going to be like a month from now. A month from now is going to be real cold. All right, so that's it. We're going to sign off at the end of another gorgeous day up here in the bush. Hungry and cold and loving life. It's day three, and the brothers find themselves welcoming the sunrise from a Saskatchewan shoreline. After a cold night on empty stomachs, Chris and Casey continue calling in search of sustenance. So much different than Alaska, hey? The one thing about elevation in Alaska, you can see out over there and, yeah. you know, at least lay eyeballs on one here. Hopefully they hear us up in there and... This is a, uh, this is a total patience game right here. Yeah. I don't know how much more I have, so... Well, I think we're on the right track, though. Like, give it the morning on a little bay like this late morning like it is right now it's just we got a lot of lakes left to explore oh yeah tons i say we head to the south i say we jet down there start at one end of the lake let's measure see how much gas it's going to take to burn yeah. willing to burn it today yeah. figure out what it's going to be and then we can just start kind of plugging our way down through but let's, let's go see if we can find some fish and some more hunting spots take the mid afternoon to explore okay. It's time to leave the comfort of staying close to base camp. The Kiefer brothers head south while monitoring the fuel it takes to reach their destination so they can better manage fuel consumption during future outings. They're working along the bays and cuts on their way to a rocky outcropping they've identified on the map.
It's the afternoon of day three, and the Kiefer brothers have found elevation at a rocky outcropping anchoring the south end of the lake. They've spent hours calling and glassing with no moose sightings or calls returned. A wildfire has ripped through the region, clearing the way for blueberries to cover the side hills. The berries won't replace red meat, but a sweet snack is something they will never pass up. Well, we are uh, gonna head down off the rock here. It's actually a really sweet spot up here, but looks to me like it's more of a bare spot than anything. A lot of rocks up in here. And when you got that many rocks and that open burn, there's a lot of berries. And I think right now, the bears will probably be heavy on the berries. So we're just kinda trucking her down off of here. Gonna continue to go explore, look in some of these different bays down here to the south fish a little bit, maybe catch some dinner, but definitely worth it to come down here to the south. It wasn't that bad. Got to kind of keep an eye on our fuel consumption as we're doing this. But I think the idea today was we'd be willing to spend the fuel just to get down here and see what it was like. But it's crazy because you go from rock wall like this behind me to straight solid bush line. So that's the plan. Continue to explore. Do some fishing. The brothers are searching the depths for northern pike, a voracious feeder with a healthy appetite and an impressive set of razor sharp teeth. During the summer months, Northern pike favor water temperatures in the 50 to 65 degree Fahrenheit range, typically found feeding in the sunken weed beds at depths between 8 to 12 feet. As fall provokes a drop in water temperature, the fish spread out and charge into deeper water, making them harder to catch. Casey's searching for a band of fish that have made permanent residence on the rocks instead of heading for the deep. Here he's hoping to find the perfect eater-sized fish, pike that stretch out to around 28 inches long, Pike this size are easier to fillet and offer enough meat to feed both brothers. All right, so we're just out here, kind of just reflecting. Two of us are just out here fishing, trying to get some food. And I mean, look at this sky behind me. And the North Country right now is just lit up and it is absolutely gorgeous. I can't get over it. So Casey and I are literally just sitting back we got some fish in the boat. We know we're gonna have a good meal tonight. We're just enjoying this. I mean, this is what it's about right here, huh? It does not get much better than this. The sky is like the brightest orange glow I think I've ever seen. Saskatchewan's living up to its name, land of the living skies. It's definitely alive right now. Sometimes you just gotta float and Relax, enjoy it, take it all in. I feel like that's a big thing right now, is it just happens so fast if you don't stop. Like for us, this is kind of our be alive moment right here. This is why we do it. Look at this. Sky in the background, absolutely gorgeous out. Just chilling. We know we're good, right? Like such a relief just to know that we got food, we're enjoying the North Country, we challenged ourselves, and we're loving it. Just get outside and get it done. That's what Drop's always been about for us, is challenge accepted. And this one, I don't know, something different about it, eh? There's definitely something different. It's just, I don't know if it's because we can move kind of at free will or what, but it is, so far it has been everything I thought it would be and more. So far, the North Country has not let us down. It's early in the trip, but what do you say we get back? Yeah, I'm great. And eat. Northern Pike. Love it. All right, let's head back. Start her up and rock and roll. 
As the sun sets behind the Saskatchewan timber, the Kiefer brothers work side by side in silence, just as they have so many times before. It's a moment for quiet celebration of the small victories the North Country has afforded them. They didn't locate any moose, but day three was a success all the same. They soaked in the sights and sounds of Saskatchewan. They've covered new ground and earned their first bounty from the cold waters, offering just enough nourishment to keep going. They enjoy their first fireside meal with gratitude and a renewed sense of respect and appreciation for the land of living skies.